Hey Santa Fe, David Chirio here with True Realty at Santa Fe Properties. And as promised, I have Pat Garcia here with Sangre de Cristo Roof Company. And we're gonna to talk to you guys about roofs, roof systems, deferred maintenance, things like that. I uh, got some questions from some of you uh, yesterday for, for Pat to answer, so we're gonna to get to those in a minute. Um, it's that time of the year, you know, we're at the last weekend of summer. Uh, fall's starting very soon, which means we're gonna get frost, we're gonna get snow and it's time for you guys to really consider doing the maintenance on your house and if you're planning on buying a house you need to consider all these things we're going to talk about before you actually uh, start the process i think you do and if you're going to sell your house you want to make sure that that's in good order because that's one of the biggest things you're going to get dinged on in a inspection report if you're trying to sell so hopefully with the information that Pat's able to share with you today, you guys will uh, be able to navigate your way through that. So, Pat, can you tell me a little bit about Sangre de Cristo Roof Company and who have you worked with in the past and who did you, why did you decide to get into roofing? All right, thanks David for having us today. Uh, yeah, Sangre de Cristo Roof Company is a new roofing company. We, uh, a, a few people that I worked with before in the past, we partnered up and uh, we decided to form our own company. We really enjoy working together. And, and um, like I said, we, we worked together before at, 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 at TC and I, a different roofing company, and, um, and we've always kept in touch. So we formed up together and uh, we're helping people out with their roofing needs. Um, the um, part of the reason why I like roofing is because uh, people, I don't really know as much about roofing as say they do their their floors or or you know their their kitchen that sort of thing and um, generally you know with roofing I'm able to help out people um, with, with any of their roofing needs and, and you know keep keep the roof over their heads is their motto um, you know and keep the water out yeah so that's that's why we're doing it. Yeah, most people don't even realize that they need to stay on top of that maintenance, right? And they don't even know that their house probably has a problem with it. How many people actually get on the roof? Very few people get up on the roof, if if ever. Um, you know, uh, uh, roofs are kind of like cars. If you don't take care of them, then you're going to lose your investment over time. Um, so like a car, you need to put new tires on. You need to change the oil. A roof's the same thing. You, you should ideally check the roof right before winter or definitely after winter um, yearly just again it's it's a major investment when you do decide to buy a new roof and so if you spend a couple hundred dollars a year maintaining it um, you'll definitely uh, keep that investment for a long time so why before winter um, because what you want to do is maybe there is some hail during the summer or spring um, or you know something happened the house shifted any anything could could happen during that time <clears throat> but you want to get out there before winter because there's nothing worse than getting out there during a snowstorm and it icing up and and water's coming in through the house and you have a major leak and really you know us as roofers we can't do that yep. much to it except for wait for it to all melt and, and whatnot so that's why i always say before winter's better because uh it's better to be proactive than reactive. It's preventative maintenance, whereas, like you said, being proactive on it, you're going to make sure that by investing a little bit of money up front, you're going to save yourself a lot of money in the long run, right? Definitely, okay. because once the water comes into the house, now not only are you looking at fixing the roof, but you also got to fix the sheetrock, plaster, whatever finish it is that you have yeah, on exactly. the inside. And then something that could have cost a couple hundred bucks, like you said, ends up costing $20,000, right? It, it can add up, definitely. Yeah. So um, when when now that you're busy, I know you're busy because I call you and you know you're like, hey, I got a couple, get, get back to you in a couple of weeks. Or so um, uh, in Santa Fe, what are the majority of your jobs like right now? So the the most typical roofs that we see are uh, built up roofs, modified bitumen, uh, also known as kind of torch down roofs. Those those are kind of the most popular roofs that we see. Um, Foam is another popular option out here in Santa Fe just because of the, the building details of the houses, new construction. It's easy for them to achieve um, their insulation factor as well as uh, 
put a roof for waterproofing, so that's why foam's pretty popular out here. Um, and then TPO and PVC roofs uh, round out the list. So that, those are typically the, the different types of roof systems that we see here in Santa Fe. Those are the flat roof systems. We're not yes. talking about the pitch. Or no like no pitch. Yeah. I mean, uh, of course, there's uh, on newer construction, there's some metal roofs that, that, that get installed too. So we do run into those from time to time. Yeah, and then... Um, so like you talked about the the built up and the modified bitumen that's usually what we see right when, typically uh, yeah so if if you have a modified bitumen roof and it's like you know 20 25 years old chances are it probably has pumice underneath it right correct so if it has pumice what kind of issues does that prevent uh, present so generally with pumice uh part of the reason why it's not allowed any more in, in roofing applications is just because once it gets saturated uh, it becomes real heavy and then you know it can grow mold that sort of deal so they they really uh, they don't allow it and anytime you encounter it you have to remove it um, so the, the the issue with with the pumice roof is now you got to tear out all that pumice and then start from scratch re-slope and it's, um, it's a huge it job kind of expensive yeah it's kind of expensive and that's what the reason I brought up pumice is if you're buying a house in Santa Fe or if you're selling a house and you don't know what kind of uh, roof system you have or what kind of materials on your roof then and you do have pumice that could be problematic for you when you're trying to sell it if you're trying to sell your house because an inspector or a, a roofer is going to go up there and they're going to see that and they're going to say look these are the problems with that and like he said it can get saturated it, it, it's just water sitting on top of your roof it's like a big sponge and that's you could understand why that would be an issue right so obviously on the if i'm representing a buyer and we're going through the inspection process that's one of the things i'm going to ask for the seller to repair uh, to fix uh, or give a credit on and you figure if you're trying to sell a house for three hundred thousand dollars here in santa fe and you find out that you have a system like that that's a twenty thousand dollar thing that we're asking you to fix and twenty thousand dollars of three hundred thousand dollars off of three hundred thousand dollar home that's a lot of money so you could be proactive like he said by getting this checked out or fixing it over time or if you do have pumice making sure that the system that that's on top of it the modified bitumen the torch down or the the built up is in good condition that way you don't need to replace it just because it has pumice doesn't mean you absolutely have to replace it right now but it's something you definitely need to consider in the future um if I'm buying, what are the things I should con consider in regards to the roof? Is there like a certain roof that I should be cautious of? Uh, not typically. I mean, generally the roof systems, um, they're, they're designed not to fail. What, what ends up happening over time is maybe the installation could have been a little bit faulty or just due to our climate and the elements of our climate, you know, the extreme heat during the day it can be up to 90 degrees and then at night you know freeze that sort of deal um that kind of uh, makes the roofs um have problems sometimes with the expansion contraction that sort of deal so you know um really all, all roof systems they, they work but it's just that maintenance that we keep talking about that um you know nothing lasts forever outside um, you know, even even a car, you'll see over years the paint will just start coming off, and that's due to the UV rays from the sun and the deterioration. So imagine if a car has that happen, what what happens to a roof over time? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, 15, 20 years. So um, yeah, I, I I say that all roofing systems are good, just so long as they're checked up on and you know um, they they have maintenance performed on them. Yeah, it kind of reminds me. I have my sister. Uh, had a, a foam roof, right? Or a, was it TPL? Foam, yeah. It was foam. And she was mistaken. So some, either she had heard it or somebody had told her that, you know, uh, because it's foam, it's going to last for 25, 30 years, which is not the case. You still need to stand on top of maintenance in it because what happens if it even starts to fail on a foam roof? Yeah, so on that particular one, um, what happened is, is that it just didn't get any maintenance and then finally, when uh, when she, you know when they noticed that there was a leak, we went up there to take a look at it, and it was kind of too far gone. Um, so yeah, I think she had to get that whole thing torn off and replaced, um, just because she had let it go too far. Mm -hmm. Whereas if she would have called maybe 
four or five years before, it wouldn't have been an issue, and, and we could have done the preventative maintenance and saved her uh, tens of thousands of dollars. Right. So, if it's a flat roof, no matter what the material is, you need to stay you on top have of the maintenance. To stay on top of it. So, what's the lifespan on the roof, assuming that you can you can stay on top of the maintenance? How long does the roof last? Uh, usually, I've seen them last forty years. You know. I, gotten the age ask people oh well how old is this roof when we're up there talking to them and you know they say oh this one's 40 years old it's it's a good roof and and one of the keys that that's super impressive when i run into these older roofs is that they always uh say yeah i come up here once a year and i do this that and the other you know i i have seen multiple 30 year old foam roofs and i'm like wow this roof's in good shape and they say yeah i take care of it I have you out here because I just want to make sure that what I'm doing yeah. is correct. So, I mean, um, you know, a tar and gravel roof will last you probably 25, 30 yeah. years. Yeah. Um, they, they all last a long time, um, just as long as you have an eye up there. And, yeah. and, you know, you do just the little things. So, like, let's say I called you tomorrow and I do have pumice. There is a leak there. And, you know, uh, it was a modified bitumen roof. You know, it was torched down. It had pumice on there. You need to re tear off the roof, put a new one down on like a 2,000 square foot home. How much does something like that cost? Roundabout, and then what kind of warranty comes with that? So on a 2,000 square foot home, we're looking at about, you know, maybe between 20, 30,000 for the tear off. And, and, and the reason why there's such a fluctuation in the price is because until you tear it out, you don't know if there's insulation in the ceiling or if it's on the roof deck. So that kind of, that's, that's a variable that'll affect the price. Um, you know, once you start off with the new roof, um, it, it will give you a 10 year warranty mm -hmm. on, on any roof that, that we put on. Um, and, and with with maintenance, there's no reason why you shouldn't get 20 to 30 years out mm -hmm. of that roof. Um, one thing though, before we replace the roof, what we like to see is if we can repair that existing yeah. location. So there, <clears throat> there's a couple things that we can do. One is just to three course all the penetrations in the canal. They are, odds are that it's leaking from that area. Very seldom do you f see like a leak in the field. And the field's just the rest of the area, uh, the flat surface area of the roof. Um, so usually we can fix a leak by, by looking at those penetrations and canales. Um, the other thing too is that we do roof restorations at, on, on a project like that where it has pumice, we can coat it with, with, with the silicone coating yeah. um, so we don't have to do the tear off. Avoid that and, and we still can give you a 10, 15 year warranty depending on how thick we apply the silicone. That's right, yeah, and I know you've provided quotes for some of my clients for things like that. Another thing I know you guys have done, if people are trying to sell their house, you know, I recommend, I always recommend that they, they uh, go through a checklist of things that they want to make sure is uh, in good working order on their house. One of the big ticket items is the roof, obviously. And I know you've gone out there and told them, yeah, you know, it's, it's in pretty good shape, but it does need maintenance. We could provide maintenance and give you a one-year warranty on that. And that helps you if you're a seller. Um, if you add a one-year warranty on your, uh, on your listing, because that just gives the buyer a little bit of peace of mind knowing that you stayed on top of the maintenance and they at least have a year in it where at least that part of the house is going to be all right. It doesn't mean that it's a new roof. It doesn't mean that they're not going to have to to stay on top of that maintenance. It just gives them a little bit of peace of mind for that first year where they're still moving in, getting acclimated to their life. Um, and so to do like a, the maintenance part of it, like you said, instead of replacing it, you said it's twenty, thirty thousand dollars the maintenance will cost about how much? Uh, you know, usually depending on the size of the house, it can range anywhere from, tw and, and of course, depending on the condition of the roof, anywhere from maybe a, a thousand on up to maybe three, four thousand, something like that. But it, like you alluded to earlier, um, what would you rather have on a $300,000 or a $300, house if you're taking off 20 for a new roof? A thousand dollars is a bargain, you know? And, and, and if you go in there, if you're the seller and, and you have us do it before the inspection report and you have a transferable warranty, which we provide, um, you know, it's kind of, it, it, it's a good way to, to, to spend the money as opposed to, again, being proactive versus reactive, you know, after the um, report comes out, then, you know, of course the, the buyer wants a new roof. 
Um, but if you tell them, hey, this is what we have, um, we already got it maintenance and it has a transferable warranty, that there's no reason why they should ask for yep. a new roof. And, that, and that's one of the reasons I think it's so important that sellers do that. You know, inspection, if you're getting an inspection on a house and you're a buyer, the inspector's gonna find stuff especially the roof. That's one of the biggest things they talk about. What kind of condition is the roof in? What kind of condition is the roof in? Is it, is it leaking? Is it old? Do I need to get a new one? Things like that. So um, by getting a some maintenance done prior to even listing it, you're kind of getting ahead of that situation already. And then you have a transferable warranty on top of that. It's just, it's a no brainer to do, especially if you're trying to sell your house. Obviously, if you know your roof's in terrible condition, um, you know, you, that that's just something you're going to have to deal with but on the buyer side of it it does give you a little bit of peace of mind knowing that there was a roofer that just did maintenance on the house providing one year of service on it because somebody like pat isn't going to go up there and just say they did service on it and then provide a one-year warranty they're going to do the work because their goal is to not go back out there they don't want to go back out there and fix something that they just worked on they want to do the work right the first time that's the whole point of getting a warranty right yeah and that's how we make money is going <clears throat> there on one trip and not multiple trips so yeah you're right we we strive to get it done the first time correctly well i mean it makes Otherwise, sense it's just yeah. good business practice right exactly so hey man i really appreciate hey, it i think you. you gave us appreciate a lot of information it. how can people get a hold of you uh my phone number you can give me a call 505-699-9604 and uh yeah give me a call and i'll be more than happy to go out and inspect your roof um and let you know if maintenance is the way to go or you know worst case scenario you have to tear it off and and, and do the uh roof replacement Right on, and I'll put his number on the end of my uh, this little video here. Thanks for checking in, guys. These are things that we're going to do in this video series. We're going to have professionals like Pat, um, lenders, uh, things like that to kind of give you guys all the information you need, whether you're buying a house or selling a house. I really hope you guys got something out of this, and if you guys have more questions from your Pat, feel free to give us a call, okay? Take care.